Hello everybody and welcome to my next Allegro HD tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be learning about gravity. Uh, gravity is very important especially when we're working with platformer games and such so it's a really effective topic to learn about. So when we're working with gravity in something like Allegro we're not going to be using like Newton's law of gravity. You can uh, put that in your programs if you would like to. You can incorporate the gravitational formula or you could use a uh, a physics engine such as Box 2D, but uh, in this tutorial we're going to be going to a very simplified version of it that can be just as effective as those methods that you use. So first of all, in our camera function, we want to comment out our camera Y or camera one. The reason being is that we don't want to have a vertical screen scrolling, or the view in our game could be inverted, or we we don't we just don't want to affect the view. Also, uh. Yeah, that, that's just basically it for a camera, and you might might want to alter the map so then the map it fills the screen. It's up to you which what you want to do. It's just that I have a variable called ground height, and your ground height might alter depending on where the ground is in your map. Okay, so just so you guys know that. So I have incorporated five new variables in the program. One called jump speed, which is the speed at which you jump at, just like the move speed. I have my velocity, which is going to affect uh, how fast and where the with the position where the it moves, where the player moves. So how fast it moves and where it moves, in which direction it moves at. And so yeah, this can represent velocity y and velocity in the x coordinate. We have a constant integer called gravity. Gravity is is constant throughout our world. If you want to make it realistic, in our world, gravity is constant. So nothing changed with gravity, so it should be a constant integer. You might have things in your in your game to make it cooler that will increase gravitational pull, etc. So you can make this a regular integer or floating point value if you want to increase the gravity. It's up to you. Uh, normally, when we make games, normally the player's position and stuff, and uh, and camera position and such are floating point values, like just floats rather than integers. But uh, just to make it easier to understand, then everything's been an integer, and everything is going to be an integer for my tutorials. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that's how you can handle gravity, and we have uh, our ground height. And our ground height is equal to screen height subtract block size y. That's what my ground height is because my vertically my map fits the screen perfectly. And then we have a boolean variable called jump, and that's going to determine if we can jump or if we can't. If jump is equal to false, that means we can't jump, meaning our player's in the air. And if we set jump to true, then that means our player can jump. And you could alter these if you want to incorporate double jumping or whatever you want in your game. And I'll, I'll teach. I'll be teaching you that in the advanced platformer series if that's a series that actually wins. So uh, let us get right into the game loop. Okay. So in our game loop, some things have changed within our game loop. Uh, notice that before we had player position zero plus equals move speed. Now we're not going to do that. We're going to say our velocity is equal to our move speed, and our and if we press the left key, velocity zero is equal to negative move speed. Else, then the velocity is equal to zero. So basically, if we, if we're not pressing right or left, then we reset the velocity to zero, letting us know that we're not moving at all. Uh, and I'll tell you why the velocity is really important using this. And if we press the up key and jump is equal to true, then we set velocity equal to negative jump speed. Since jump speed is uh, equal to ten, negative jump speed will be equal to negative ten and therefore our player will move towards the top of the screen and then we reset jump equal to false so we right now have an if statement if we say that if the not if jump is equal to false that means we should activate the gravity and if the velocity is equal to true then we reset gravity back to zero so I'll put reset uh, reset velocity So basically, if if jumps equal to false, that means our player is in the air. So we have to set velocity y plus or velocity one plus equals gravity. Simple enough. And then right here, we just say player position x plus equals velocity x, and player position y plus equals velocity y. That's what we do right here. 
now you're going to wonder why we're doing this okay so by default our velocity x and our velocity y is equal to zero correct so for the moving in horizontally right now it's not really important but for gravity it's going to be important and you can use this to alter the horizontal movement especially if you want to have like incorporate acceleration or something in your program if you want your player not to move at a constant weight rate but you want it to accelerate over time then velocity can be uh, really effective to you and if you've learned about physics and acceleration and velocity then you can understand how velocity uh, can be used within our programs so anyways look at it this way so our velocity y is going to be equal to uh, negative negative 10 okay so say our player's position is equal to 300 and uh, velocity is equal to negative 10 so jump is going to be equal to false so therefore it's going to say velocity plus equals gravity which means velocity is going to be negative negative nine so basically it's going to say a uh, player position y plus equals negative nine when it loops again uh, velocity is um, jump still going to be equal to false so it's going to say velocity one plus equals gravity so velocity uh, y is going to be equal to two now so it's going to say player position y plus equals uh, plus equals to negative plus equals negative two or I mean sorry 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 plus equals negative eight etc etc until a uh, velocity becomes positive and then the player will move down so what does this mean right now so velocity each time each time we go each time jumps equals to false it adds one to our velocity so then we don't always fall at a constant rate or like jump at a constant rate we move at a increasing or decreasing rate so therefore the velocity won't always be constant so when we if we jump if we jump into the air we don't we don't want to fall down like gravity is equal to one pixel so is equal to one so therefore we don't want to fall down at one pixel at a time we want to fall at an increasing rate to make it look like the gravity's in effect if we only move by a constant value every single time then the gravity doesn't look realistic it looks fake so what our velocity does is that say for instance our our players in the air and then velocity is going to be equal to say one now and a velocity plus one is going to uh, 1 plus 1 is going to be equal to 2 therefore player position y plus equals 2 then when we loop again velocity y is going to be equal to 3 so player position plus equals 3 we loop again velocity is going to be equal to 4 player position plus equals 4 so therefore we fall at an increasing rate the higher we fall the faster we will fall the higher we are the faster we will fall and then you'll fall at an, an, at an increasing rate and therefore you will it will look like you have gravity a constant gravity within your program and this is why velocity is important if you were to say something like this player position player position one plus equals gravity then every single time we loop player position the y in the y coordinate it would only fall by one pixel every single time and therefore it would look your program would look kind of bootleg it wouldn't look proper the gravity wouldn't look realistic so that is why we have velocities so if they're if the velocities if the person's in the air then we set we activate the gravity if they're not then we reset the vo velocity equal to zero then we add our velocity to our player position x and we add our velocity to our player position y then this is where it might get a bit more confusing but it should be fairly easy so right now you see jump is equal to player position y plus 10 is greater than or equal to jump height and basically player position 1 plus 10 is equal to our y too so if, our, if the bottom of our square or the bottom of our player is touching the ground then we want to find out the jump's position well what is this all saying right now well right here the greater than or equals then symbol is a conditional operating conditional operator so if we have a say a if statement the statement can either return a possible true or false which is just like a boolean so if we say one if one is equal to one then do whatever this statement is going to be true so it's going to return a true value 
if we say if 1 is equal to 0 then whatever this statement is going to be equal to false so an if statement returns a true or false value so instead of just doing if player position 1 plus plus 10 is greater than or equal to ground height and then we set jump equals true and then we put else jump equals false you just wasted four lines of code four unnecessary lines of code so what you want to do is if we said jump is equal to this this right here will return a true or false value and whatever it returns jump will be equal to it so if, if our x if our y2 is greater than or equal to the ground height then our position then jump is going to be equal to true if the player position if the, if the y2 is less than the ground height then jump then this is going to return false and therefore jump is going to be equal to false so this is like putting an if statement all into one line so last but not least we say that if jump is true then we reset our player position equals um to our ground height so therefore the the player will be on uh, on the ground the reason we do this is because say our player position due to gravity is equal to 310 and our ground height is equal to 300 what we want to do is that we just want to reset it so that it is set that our y2 is equal to our ground height and therefore it will it will touch the ground and it will look proper without this statement right here the player could have didn't actually go through the ground and that's not what we want so to show you an example of what could happen if I run this program right here so notice our player went through the ground and when we jump it will set itself but if, what we don't want is that if we ha if we jump at a higher value there could be a possibility that, that the player could go through the ground and that's not what we want so in case the player is below the ground height we just reset it so that the player position y is equal to ground height minus 10 so this will reset it so that the x that the y the player will be actually touching the ground another way to do this is that you could also put uh player position y is equal to velocity minus equals velocity y and therefore when we do this say our velocity y is equal to uh 20 so player position minus equals 20 so say the ground height is equal to 300 and our player position is at 310 so 310 subtract 20 is equal to 290 so when we go over here and it loops again jump is therefore going to be equal to false since it's 290 so then it's going to loop again if jumps equal to false then uh, velocity y plus equals gravity but since it was true before then velocity was reset to zero so then velocity y plus zero plus one is equal to one and therefore uh, player position velocity y one will be added to our player position y sorry if it sounds confusing but one will be one will be added to that so now our current position will be 291 loops again velocity y is equal to two uh, so 291 plus 2 is 293 and etc etc and then we'll keep on looping until it resets itself this way could seem a bit more complicated so just resetting it to the ground height is fine but this isn't the way we're actually going to handle collision in our program it's just to actually do it so then we can actually see our, our gravity at work so if we just do this and we run our program we can see our gravity at work and it should run smoothly so our player would touch the ground you can jump etc and it would touch the ground there's no collision with platforms so nothing will happen but as you can see player can jump and it will touch the ground after it jumps and gravity is incorporated properly now just to show you what would happen if we never use velocity y here and we said position y uh, player sorry and we said player position and yeah so if we did all that and we ran this program see our player will be moving down much slower it will be moving by one pixel every single update 
Now you can say, what if I increase the gravity? You could increase the gravity and it could look good if you want to, but if you want a more realistic effect, then you would want to do increasing gravity every single update. So if I set gravity to 10 right now and I run this program, it will still fall, but it will seem laggy. It won't fall, it won't be effective. So the most effective way to do it is using velocity. And it might, it, it is a bit more code, but it, it works better in the end for you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Ho I hope you liked it. And thanks for watching, and bye.